Hi guys, my name is Stevie and I like to write songs. I got a request from one of my viewers to write a Black Sabbath song. Now, I grew up on a strict diet of Black Sabbath. I love the band, especially the early albums. So let's have a think about the style of Black Sabbath songwriting and see what we can learn from other songwriters. Let's go. Black Sabbath are a group of working class guys from the industrialized north of England from the 60s. Now, at the time when they decided to start a band, the cultural zeitgeist was all about California and free love and peace and all that stuff. Now, that doesn't really resonate with the culture that they came from when they worked in factories every day. It was oppressive rainy weather and stuff that we're used to here in Ireland as well. I really empathize with them that in a way that they could not gel with the idea of this happy movement. So they had a very, very clever idea when they started their band. They decided to do the exact opposite of the cultural zeitgeist. And while they were starting their band, they were very into horror movies and watching all the old Boris Karloff horror movies. So they named their band after Black Sabbath, and they decided to write music that would summon up and evoke the atmosphere of these old horror movies. And in doing so, they ended up creating a style of music and being the pioneers of what we now call heavy metal. Almost everyone who plays heavy metal owes a debt of gratitude to Black Sabbath for this very simple idea that they had. All the tropes and cliches of heavy metal and all the things that we rely on on a daily basis mostly come from the aesthetic sensibilities of Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath have a very special production technique. They really, really sound like a band who are in a room playing together. It almost sounds like they're improvising and just jamming with each other and enjoying the music. And I love that about Black Sabbath. The drums and the bass guitar are a lot more dense and complicated than what you would have heard from a lot of other bands at the time. They set up quite a simple rough and then they play around with it and do various variations as the song develops. One of the things I found interesting was actually listening to how Ozzy composes a vocal melody. And it's very unusual because he seems to use the whole pentatonic scale. He doesn't limit himself to a small amount. He uses quite a wide range. Obviously, there's a double tracked sound to his voice as well, which I'm going to try and emulate. I'm not going to go too much into trying to emulate the production technique of Black Sabbath. That's not really what this channel is about. This channel is more about songwriting and seeing if we can listen to Black Sabbath and take inspiration from the way they approach songwriting. I think Tony Iommi is a very imaginative guitar player. I'm not quite sure how he does it, but he always seems to play things that spark my imagination and I think they're quite creative and engaging to listen to. I've been listening to their greatest hits from the very early days, Sabbath Bloody Sabbath, War Pigs, all the classics, Iron Man, all those types of songs, and that's what we're going to be trying to emulate today. So let's get the guitar and see what we can come up with. One of the things that people talk about a lot whenever they talk about Black Sabbath and their harmony is the tritone interval. This. Now, there's mythology around this in heavy metal that this interval was banned by the Catholic Church. It's a bit of a myth. Uh, I think it was just avoided because it's quite difficult for a human voice to find that interval and sing it. So it's advisable to not use it in choral music. But apart from that, it's a very widely used interval. You hear it a lot in blues, and I think Black Sabbath are very influenced by blues. So in the standard blues scale, it's there. And that, that is a scale that you would quite often hear Black Sabbath using as well. Heavy metal bands love these really dissonant intervals like the tritone or flat five. They also love a, like a flat nine. You hear that quite a lot. You could also call it a flat second. So put the, put the two of them together and you're in pure heavy metal territory. It would be remiss if we tried to write a Black Sabbath riff that didn't have this flat five tritone interval. 
So let's try and do that. And of course, we want it to have a sludgy, slow, doomy kind of Black Sabbath feel as well. So this is what I came up with. So let's try and put that down with the bass guitar in unison and see what that sounds like as a starting point. So let's have a quick look at my template for this song, first of all. On the guitars, I've got two rhythm guitars pan left and right, and they're both using Helix Native. This is my normal patch that I always use. It's a Rev Gen Red amp with an ML Sound Lab IR. I've added a bit of spring reverb just to give it more of a vintage feel, and I felt it was a bit too much 2K. It was quite bright sounding, and I wanted it to sound more analog and old to get a kind of a Black Sabbath sound. So that's why I've scooped out some of that 2K. The bass is the normal patch that I always use on Helix Native. It's bi amped. We've got a clean DI guitar coming through a compressor, and then we've got an amped sound which has a little bit of distortion on it and an SVT amp, an 8x10 cab. The drums are perfect drums and I'm doing a little bit of routing stuff. So we can see here that I've got the kick, snare, tom, overhead and samples all sent out to separate tracks. And in those, I have bits of EQ and dynamics on them and on the overheads as well. And then on the main output of the drums, I've summed them all together again, and I'm using the Shadow Hulse compressor with a 50% mix, so that it's a bit of a parallel compression. And there's a clipper at the end which just stops everything from going into the red on my DAW. I'm going to use my normal effects chain for mastering, which has this very subtle EQ that takes out some of the mud and boosts some of the bottom end. I don't think I'll want fresh air in this one because I don't want to brighten up the sound, I want it to sound vintage and old. So let's remove that. And then of course I've got my BX master desk at the end. So instead of brightening up the production this time, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to try and darken the production. I'm going to add a bit of this BB tubes from Waves, just to give it more bass heaviness and more saturation, so that it sounds like it was recorded in an older setting. It has a nice 1970s analog vibe to it. Let's see how that goes. This is an experiment for me, but hopefully it'll work out. So let's hear what it sounds like with these settings. So we'll need to build it up a bit from there. Okay, so I've copied the bass guitar back for another two repetitions before the guitars come in with it and this little scratchy thing in the guitar. So um, I still don't think this is a satisfying intro for the song. I think at some point we'll go to this, but we need an extended intro that's going to set up the mood for the song so that I can start getting into a feeling about what this song might be about or um, how to proceed emotionally with it. I'm starting to get a bit of a vocal melody idea here, but I, I want to hold back on it for a moment and work more on the intro before we get into that. There's two things I was thinking about in the intro here, and one of them is a key change that I really like is in Fairies Wear Boots, where I'm not sure, I would have to check, but I think they go up a tone. They're sort of playing... Um <laughs> You know what I mean? Something like that. It's definitely a tone up. So I was thinking I would like to do something in D before coming up to E and introducing the main stuff in the intro. One of the things that I also was trying to emulate is this thing in Warpix where he sort of does things like... Um <laughs> I know you know what I'm trying to do, but I don't want to actually play the rough just in case I get any get in trouble on YouTube. So this is the first bit that I'm working on here. It 
just as I was playing that there now, I thought maybe we could start it like this. And then go on to something else then after that before we end up maybe something else in in the d yeah so what about the the rough at the very end of wire pegs and so on what have we done something along those lines Right, I think we might have it. Let's try this. Then the bass guitar rough comes in, introducing the main rough of the song. Let's try and assemble that and see if that works as a good enough setup for the emotional intensity of the song and see if it works for us. One of the things that I want to do in this is think very carefully about the way Geezer Butler plays the bass because he walks the bass quite a lot. He's always... He does it in a way that's quite unique to him because a lot of all our bass players might just... or play in unison with what the guitar's doing. But he doesn't. He likes to play his own bass line that's completely separate from the guitars. And I want to try and get a bit of that into the track as well. So let's go through this intro a few times and see if I can come up with any ideas for it. See what I'm trying to go for here? Um, I'm trying to get, especially in that bit, I, I actually got a wee bit of a chill there now because it did sound quite like Black Sabbath when we went into the E bit again at the start of the intro. So I'm going to try and work on this, see if I can eke out exactly what the right note should be.
Something like that. Something like that. Let's see if I can just record that now and nail whatever bass line comes into my head. But it's, it's that kind of vibe I'm going for. Right, so it took a couple of attempts at it to work out exactly what the bass should do, but I think I got a, a really strong Black Sabbath vibe in the E part. Let's hear. That sounds very like Warpax. Yeah, that's very Black Sabbath. Got a very square boots. Right, let's see if we can join these parts on now. There's a bit of an uneven pattern from the time signature here at the start bit, so. If I bring this all this stuff back to start exactly where the bass left off, then it sort of starts... What is that? It starts after the fifth quaver. That's probably... We probably don't want to do that. You know what? It might be, Instead of joining them like that, we should maybe keep this stuff starting on an actual bar and pull this stuff back to match it. Right, so now we have a situation, I think, where the intro starts in a very wrong place, but it allows us to start right on the bar line with the main riff. It's a wee bit awkward, but let's see if it works. Okay, it does work. That's what I intended. It's just weird that the timing of that intro ended up like that, because we keep losing a wee beat every time. Let's work on the vocals for a while. While I was listening to Black Sabbath today, I was paying particular attention to how Ozzy constructs his vocal melodies. He does things quite often where he sings in unison with the guitar riff, which is a very unusual thing, and I was always told it was a bad idea, but it sounds really cool in Black Sabbath. And he seems to sing a lot in using the whole pentatonic scale. Quite often the vocal melodies are limited around the, the one and the two and the three and the seven. Like last week when we were doing ACDC, very limited vocal melodies, they've got a small range. Ozzy extends this range to almost a full octave of the pentatonic scale, which is quite an interesting bluesy sound. I think Black Sabbath owe a lot of their music to blues. There is a very strong blues influence that runs through their music. I'm thinking of things like the pentatonic run that Ozzy sings at the start of War Pigs, things like that. So I want to do some of that. And I also want to think about the things that Black Sabbath writes songs about. I mean, of course, they, they do the horror movie stuff. There was an underlying theme that I came across listening to a lot of Black Sabbath, and it's the notion that the antagonist in the lyrics is a they. For example, they started the war in War Pigs, or they just tell you that you're on your own, fill your head all full of lies. So a lot of the time they use this concept of they to set up a paranoia or a struggle against someone who is going to hold you down. They talk a lot about class struggle as well. So I thought I would do a song about class struggle and use this they as the antagonist. And it seems quite culturally appropriate at the moment because where everyone is talking about cost of living, we're all struggling financially while billionaires are getting richer. So let's write a song about that because it does feel to me like something that Black Sabbath would write a song about. I've set up a piano for a wee minute. I'm not planning on using a piano in the song, but I just want to talk about the vocal melodies. We're keeping it quite simple. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so um, while that riff is playing along, I was thinking something like... And that gives a room. So sometimes I get a lyrical idea first, but in this case, we're working on the vocal melody first. I'm going to sing that vocal melody over the rough until the placeholder lyrics that I come up with start forming into actual usable lyrics. So let's do that. So I've had a cup of coffee and I've played this riff on a loop and sang rubbish placeholder lyrics until eventually I came up with these lyrics. And I think they're reasonably Black Sabbathy. And it's using this they as the antagonist in the lyrics, the way Black Sabbath like to do. They make the rules, control the fools like puppet masters. Sleepwalking hordes stumble towards their own disaster. They load the dice with diatribes accusing scapegoats. They count their wins, escaping in the burning lifeboats. It's not a brilliant rhyme, scapegoats and lifeboats, but it works okay. I'm going to sing that now, and I'm going to double it up the way Ozzy does. And it's not going to sound like Black Sabbath, because I don't sound like Ozzy. But we'll try and at least through the use of similar vocal melodies, see if we can summon up some kind of a Black Sabbath idea. So let's try that. You know what? I got the feeling when I was singing that, that maybe the riff is a bit too busy for that vocal melody. Maybe we need to simplify the riff. Yeah, I like that. Let's try and put that on. They make the rules, control the fools like puppet masters. Sleepwalking hard, some towards their own disaster. They love to die, swim, die, and try to accuse a couple of little bass runs on as well because I think Geezer Butler probably would have done that and the idea here is that every time this first section comes up it'll obviously be different lyrics but I'll try and have different bass lines in it every time as well so that there's that little bit of variation. You know what I hear coming after that? You might think there would be a bridge or a chorus section or something but I hear a little instrumental thing where the drums take over sort of like dun 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 Dun, 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 dun. That's the way I write songs quite a lot. I sort of imagine it in my head and try and flesh it out before I even start recording. Playing those notes from the main rough, the flat five into the four, and then the three into the... But we'll do it the other way around. We'll go the three into the four, and then the flat five into the four. Dun, 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 dun. And so we're, we're trying to come up with nice drum fills for in between each of these stabs. Let's try that. Right, so I put that little run at the end, doo -doo -doo, because um, I'm thinking that we could go around this whole section again here. So let's copy it up to here and just check what that sounds like. Should be fine, I tried it already when I was playing it. 
Yeah. Now, let's see if we can write all these drum fills for in these gaps here. Okay, I think eventually I will do a video dedicated to drum programming, but it's quite boring and quite intensive for me. I have a very slow, meticulous way of programming the drums, but I'll show you what I have here, and you can see that a bit of attention has been paid to the dynamics of the drums. Let's have a listen to these drum fills. So we're back to this rough, and then we need more vocals coming in here. So we'll have to write the same again as we did for the previous verse and write another verse now. So for the second verse, I was kind of thinking, they, who are they? And the obvious answer is that they're the 1%, the Illuminati, the people that think are these billionaires who secretly control the world. So the 1% stir up consent to stay in power. This is an idea manufacturing consent. This idea that the billionaires own the newspapers and all the news media. And so they control the narrative that's being sent out through the news media and newspapers in order to brainwash people into an implicit support for the status quo that elevates the billionaires to be the ones in control. Instead of us worried about the fact that the distribution of wealth in the world is unfair, en masse put into the bank accounts of a few billionaires, and it could be distributed more evenly. Instead, they convince us that the problem with our society is people who claim benefits, illegal immigrants, the EU, the Mexicans coming over the border. These ideas distract us into thinking that that's the problem in our society instead of looking around and saying actually the problem in our society is this 1%, this mythical Illuminati that secretly own and control everything. Constructing fear, they engineer from skyward towers. And while we bleed, they need to feed from sweat and tears. With no remorse, now all resources commandeered. Cool. We're starting get to get into the flow of the lyrics now and they're starting to have some kind of sense of, about where they're going for the rest of the song. Okay, so we need to do the new bass line for this section. Let's get that sorted. Right, so we'll run through this a few times and see if I can come up with different licks for this one. The one percent star of consent to stay in power. Constructing fear they engineer from... I think constructing fear they engineer from Skyward Towers, we should maybe do some kind of ascending bass line. <laughs> It's programmatic to the idea of constructing from Skyward Towers. I think that feels pretty nice. The one percent star of consent to stay in power. Constructing the engine from Skyward Towers. And while we bleed, they need to feed from sweat and tears. With no remorse now. I like that as well. I think it's should start there. Right? Yep, yep, let's record that.
Nice. Okay, so I've been kind of wrecking my head trying to come up with an idea for the chorus. Things that are possibly going to happen at the minute is I was thinking that this kind of makes it sound like it could be in G minor. So maybe we could modulate into G minor for the chorus or just stay in E. And so I had a coffee and I had to think about it and I still don't have an idea for the chorus. But another riff came into mind that I think I'll put down as a placeholder, but I also think it is potentially a good idea for the start of the chorus because I was thinking about doing something like going down chromatically down into the E. And that might be a nice thing to lead up into the chorus. So this riff... And then that leads into E, which might be something that I might use later on in the song, or it might be something that leads into the chorus. I haven't decided yet. I would really need to write the chorus first before that. But let's get this riff recorded anyway. And we know it leads into there. So let's do it. Right, so I am genuinely stumped as to where I'm going to go now with the chorus. I'm going to have to maybe go back and listen to some more Black Sabbath, see if I can get an idea for how they would come into a chorus from here. Completely out of blank at the moment. So probably a good time to just call it quits today and work on the chorus in the next episode next week. Let's listen now to what we have so far. Here goes. <laughs> Those triplets, they're not in the drums. comes next who knows if any of you guys have any ideas about where i should proceed from here please let me know in the comments i'd love to hear what you think okay so i really did enjoy that i do love black sabbath they have a special place in my heart the teenage me was obsessed with black sabbath i think i was somewhat successful in some of the ideas that i pulled out of black sabbath there are parts of it that do evoke 
a certain feeling of Black Sabbath and their songwriting style. So that's good. Who knows where the song's going to go next. But next week, hopefully, I'll have some ideas for the chorus. We'll get the chorus fleshed out and we'll try and do some more arrangement in the song. But cool, rock and roll. I really enjoyed that. I hope you guys find this interesting. Um, any of you Black Sabbath fans out there, please let me know where I'm going right, where I'm going wrong, how we could make this even more Black Sabbath-y. I'd love to have your input on this. If you're finding these videos useful to you, then please like and subscribe, hit the bell notification icon, buy me a coffee, support the channel, try and help this channel to grow. Still early days with the channel, but we're moving in the right direction. Share it around with anyone you think might find it interesting as well. That would also be really cool. And keep the comments coming, guys. I love hearing from you. Thank you so much, guys. And I'll see you next week with the chorus. You guys rock.